Hello everyone, I am Simone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about an aspect of India that remains still unknown even to a lot of its inhabitants. I am talking about the local Indian Judaism. In this video we will analyze a particular variant of it. India is known globally as a country that hosts almost all the world religions and for the way in which religiosity is part of people's daily lives. We know that India is home of Hinduism. According to the latest official census, which was conducted in 2011, 79.8% of Indians are Hindus, which means around 966 million people. They are immediately followed by the other major religions of the country, that are Islam, Christianity, Sikhism, Buddhism, Jainism, Zoroastrianism and many others numerically minor. I said earlier, though, that India is home to almost all the world religions. So the natural question, are there even Jews in India? I am not talking about the hordes of Israeli tourists that invade the streets and beaches of Goa, but about the native Jews. The answer is yes, and according to 2011 census, their total number is 4,650 individuals. They belong to very different communities with different origins. Most of them left India after the independence of the country in 1947. They are located mainly to Israel and to other English-speaking countries. Historically, Jewish communities settled along the western and the southern coast of the subcontinent. These reasons were similar to the ones of the arrival of the first Muslim communities, as I have analyzed in a previous video. The history of the Jews constitutes an important chapter in the human history. They've been pushed since ancient times to seek refuge in the most desperate part of the world. For nearly 2000 years, India has been representing a stable and secure home for them. Judaism is said to be one of the first foreign religions to reach India, even at the time of the mythical King Solomon. In this video I will talk about a particular Jewish community in southern India, the Madras Jews, today reduced to one single last family. This is the story of the last foreign Jews Paradesi family of Madras. The first ancient Jewish communities in southern India initially settled on the Malabar coast in Kerala and in the Kanyakumari district in Tamil Nadu. They were of Near and Middle Eastern origin. During the 16th and 17th centuries, new Jewish communities were added to the existing ones. The latter, however, came from the Iberian Peninsula. They were, in fact, Sephardic Jews. The presence of Sephardic Jews in India was the result of a discriminatory religious policy that took place in the Iberian Peninsula during the 15th and 16th centuries. Specifically, the Catholic kingdoms of Portugal and Spain were actively working in removing the Jews and Muslim components from their territories through expulsions, forced conversions and even executions. In that, the institution of Inquisition was instrumental. However, if Muslim communities were able to relocate to the Islamic territories of Northern Africa and the Ottoman Empire, the Jewish community did not have a majority Jewish state entity to move to. It then dispersed among the religiously more tolerant countries of Northern Europe and in the colonial domains in the New World, where the Inquisition was not yet present or too rooted. Around this period, Portugal was in the process of creating its colonial outpost in India. Several Jewish individuals relocated there. These newly immigrated Sephardic Jews were known as Paradesi. This word derives from the word of ancient Sanskrit origin of Paradeshin, and it was then adopted by Tamil and Malayalam languages. This word is a combination of the words para, that means other, and deshin, that means person who lives in the country, therefore indicating a non-native person. Although this was an ancient word used in context other than Judaic, over time it ended up being designated to these recently immigrated Sephardic Jews. As said, the first Paradisi Jews came from Portugal and Spain. With the progressive disappearance of Portuguese control and the beginning of Dutch and British one, Jews from other parts of the world began migrating to India. That happened mainly because of two reasons. First, the creation of areas more tolerant in terms of religion. Second, because the mission of the British and Dutch authorities in India mainly was economic and commercial in nature, aiming at maximizing profits. The religious aspect was, till a certain degree, completely ignored in British and Dutch domains. This was unlike what happened in the Portuguese territories, where commercial goals were secondary to religious conversions and cultural assimilation. This prompted the Paradisi Jews already present in the Portuguese territories in India to move to Dutch and British possessions. They consequently invited some of their co-religionists, who initially moved to Northern Europe or the Caribbean, 
following their expulsion from the Iberian Peninsula, to reunite with them in India. Given its peculiar linguistic and commercial skills, this community, despite being numerically small, was able to act as a bridge between Europe and the subcontinent during the colonial era. In an attempt of the British authorities to overtake the Portuguese monopoly in trading precious stones, gems and diamonds, in 1639 the first British outpost in India, Fort St. George, which later became known as Madras, was founded. Within a few years, the first Jews began to flow into Madras, which became one of the main poles of Indian Judaism, as well as one of the most dynamic trade posts of the subcontinent. The fortune of the Jewish community of Madras was due to the trade of coral, diamonds and precious stones from the Golconda mines in the present-day Talangana and Andhra Pradesh. These were sent abroad to other Jewish counterparts for refinement, cutting and polishing. In Madras, the Paradisi Jewish community settled in Georgetown area, around Coral Merchant Street in Mutialpet, where the first synagogue of the city was also built. Coral Merchant Street took its name from one of the main businesses of the community, the trade of corals. An interesting fact is that this street still exists with its original name in modern Chennai. In this context, fortune and wealth of the Jewish community of Madras flourished. They also had their own association, called the Colony of Jewish Traders of Madras Patan, that was founded by 1687 to encourage a Jewish migration from abroad. The most obvious example of the community importance was that, when the municipality of Madras was established in 1688, among its 12 eldermen, five of them were Portuguese, three of which Jews. The most prominent families of the community were the ones of De Castro, Franco, Paiva and Porto. Within a few years, a second synagogue, much larger than the first, and a cemetery were built in the same location where today stands the Central Railway Station, on a piece of land given by the British to a Portuguese Paradisi Jew, James de Paiva, who was buried here in 1687. However, by the second half of the 18th century, the size of the Paradisi Jews community of Chennai started to diminish. Mainly, that was due to the fact that the Golconda mines started to run dry, so the local Jews had to move elsewhere to continue their occupation. Although it is recorded that at its peak several thousand Jews were living in Chennai, today the entire community is reduced to one last family. They today strive to maintain their peculiar identity and traditions against the threat of assimilation and disappearance. Nowadays it appears very difficult to track the history of the Jews of Chennai because the records were lost in 1934 where the original Jews cemetery was first moved. In 1968, when the first synagogue was demolished by the Tamil Nadu government to build a school, and in 1983, when the Jewish cemetery got shifted to its current location in Lloyd Road. A lot of tombstones of the community's old residents went missing in the process, including the one of James de Paiva. The remaining local Jews and civil records from Chennai were lost in the floods of 2015. Today, the last surviving Paradisi family of Chennai is the one of the Levis. They've been present there for more than 500 years, and they are the descendants of the last rabbi of Madras Synagogue, Salomon Halevi, who died in 1968. The head of the family, David Levi, Salomon Halevi's grandson, is constantly engaged in preserving and transmitting the memory of the Jewish community of Madras to next generations, and saving it from the oblivion. However, despite David Levi's efforts, the traces of Chennai Jews past risk to vanish. Okay, people, that's all for the day. We discovered how Madras extended its hospitality to the Jewish community by allowing it to live without discrimination for centuries and how the community in turn contributed to the greatness and the success of the city. However, despite all that, there is to disappear by the next generation because of cultural assimilation and migrations abroad. I hope this video made a little contribution to preserving the memory of this important component of Chennai and Indian history. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to like, comment and share it.